Hi, my name is Susanna, and many people ask me about this product, Rosetta Stone, because they know that I'm very passionate about language learning, and I make many videos about learning languages through music and the media. So I decided to try out Rosetta Stone, and I tried it out for Arabic. As you can see right here, it says Arabic in Arabic, and then also here in English, it says Arabic. Rosetta Stone's motto is that their product is the fastest way to learn languages. I find this extremely hard to believe because this has been the slowest way that I've ever seen to learn a language. I spent two hours installing their program. They, the program comes with a bunch of different CDs, or but the thing is, is that I had to install the update three times because it didn't work. I hope that's not normal. And then it turns out that the USB microphone headphones that came with the product didn't work. So then I had to find my own cheap, you, my cheap headphones and cheap headphones and microphones and use those. So this took two hours just to install. Then when I actually used the program for Arabic, I spent an hour and a half, and I retained one word. That's right. An hour and a half for one word. I've tried all sorts of different ways to learn foreign languages, including the very traditional boring one where your teacher gives you a list of, a list of words which you have to memorize and then the next day you have to regurgitate them on some quiz. I've learned more the old-fashioned way than I did with this product. Now, I understand what attracts people to this product because they think, oh, if I spend $500 and I go through all these CDs, I'll learn the language. I don't see how that can happen. Now, one of the issues with, with this program for Arabic is that there are over 20 countries where Arabic is spoken. There are different dialects of Arabic. Rosetta Stone doesn't even bother to tell you which kind of Arabic you're learning with this product. There's modern standard Arabic or classical Arabic or Fusha. Uh, there are also dialects. Nowhere on here does it tell you which Arabic you're learning. Now, for $500, you'd think the, the company could afford the ink and write on here which Arabic you're learning. There's also no map of the Arab world in, on, on the product. So, for those of, for some people might learn a language and not know how many countries the language is spoken in, they won't figure that out by using this program. They'll have to go find that on the internet or go find a book. The best language books that I've seen incorporate cultural, geographical, historical, religious information in their textbooks. So they engage you as, um, as a student into the culture, into the history. Because not everybody is going to be fascinated by grammar charts and, and vocabulary lists. But if they're drawn in by something that they're interested in, whether it's the food, the politics, the culture, the religion, they're going to be more apt to learn the language. I didn't see any um, historical or cultural content in here. If you see, the photographs have nothing to do with the Arab world because Rosetta Stone uses the same photographs for all of their products. So here you have some women, I think they're in South Asia somewhere. Here you have some Arab, tri um, sorry, African tribesmen. Here it looks like some Asian women playing the drums. I saw pictures of geishas or, uh, in, in the product. Now, I have nothing against geishas. When I was in Japan, I went to look at the geishas in, in Kyoto. But if you're learning Arabic, I really doubt that you're learning it so you can look at pictures of geishas. There were also uh, pictures of people eating foods that may not be so common in the Arab world. There were pictures of people swimming at the beginning of the lesson. Now. It's true, you might want to learn how to say swim, but at the beginning of a lesson, you probably would be interested in learning how to say, my name is, good morning, goodbye, hello, how are you? I didn't see that in the first lesson. There was hello, and I think there was also goodbye, but there were no other pleasantries in the first lesson. Now, because, there, um, because this product is used for people coming from all sorts of language backgrounds, whether you're an Italian speaker or an English speaker, Rosetta Stone doesn't provide any grammatical explanations. This is a huge problem because if you don't understand something, you're stuck. You cannot even copy the text because the text appears as an image. So I wanted to copy the text when I couldn't understand what the pictures were and look it up on Google Translate or some other translate, uh, translation option on the internet. I couldn't do it. What did I have to do? I had to make screenshots, drive to an Iraqi cafe in my town and ask the Iraqi owner to translate it for me. Now, not everybody lives in a neighborhood where they have people speaking the language that they're learning. So if you don't have somebody, you have to go find somebody on the internet. And that basically defeats the purpose of paying $500 for a product. 
Now, the problem with not having these explanations is that not only can you, if you don't understand a picture or you're un unable to understand what the picture is about, there are no explanations for the spelling. Now, some of you might not know this, but Arabic, just as Hebrew, has interesting uh, spelling rules that we don't have in English and many other languages. There are certain letters that change from the beginning of the word to the middle of the word to the le to the end of the word. So a letter will look different if it's the first letter of the word, if it's in the middle of the word, and if it's at the end of the word. So when one of these uh, letters was presented to me in a word, I saw on the screen that it looked different, but there was no explanation. Rosetta Stone wants you to think that their program is intuitive, that you will eventually figure stuff out. It's not intuitive. The only reason I understood that the letter changed was because I actually studied Arabic nine years ago, except I forget, I remember very little and I can barely read. That's how I remembered. I thought, oh, that's right. That's one of those letters that changes. Now, if you've never taken any, if you've never studied uh, any Semitic languages, or if you've never studied Urdu or Farsi, where they also use Arabic script, you won't understand this. Or maybe you will eventually after you see it a hundred times, but it would actually be much faster to have an explanation for you. But there is no explanation. So, uh, in my blog post, and you'll see the description for my two blog posts on the subject in the description of my of my video, I, I explain why I don't think that this is worth five hundred dollars, and how I learned more Arabic in a ten minute session of drinking tea with the Iraqi cafe owner than I did with. with using this for an hour and a half. I also give resources, free and low-cost resources, to learn Arabic. Now, there was something positive about the program, and you can read about that in, in my blog. Now, if you do have $500 burning a hole in your pocket, and if in case you're not familiar with American slang, burning a hole in your pocket means that you have so much money it's going to put a hole in your pocket. You can take a class. There are online classes for Arabic. You can find tutors online that might cost around $15 US an hour. You can do free language exchanges. There are more effective ways to learn languages. And I welcome your comments, especially if some of you have found this product to be useful. I know I haven't and I my goal is to help people learn languages in an efficient and economical way, and that's why I decided to make this video. So thank you for your attention. Goodbye.